Hi, so today I am working on the lettering piece that I did a drawing of in my last video with my logo. So this is my color comp using analogous color that I made. It's a pretty rough sketch, um, not very clean, but analogous color being two to three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, plus their tints, tones, and shades. So if you turn the color wheel over, you can see I have a full range that I can work with. I'm working from blue, green, blue. Kind of thought about a little bit of blue, blue, violet, but you can see it's more of the blue, green, and blue family and tints and tones of it. I didn't really do shades. So anyways, that was my color palette. I like blue. Um, and starting with the sketch and doing a color comp, it's just to figure out where you want to place your colors. And here I decided, it's kind of like I like the sun and moon theme, so this is my sun. Obviously I'm not going to go yellow because that wouldn't fit in, so it's just a warmer color of the blue-green. And then just, it's, this is mostly white, so it's just a little bit more white added to it for the crescent moon. It's a light blue background, a very neutral border, and then I played with the color more in my signature. And part of this project is to create some transparencies where things cross over each other. So those are areas where you can see where it's drawn in here, where the color could be different. Um, there is not a solid rule on how to do that. It could be like an overlay. So if this was lighter, here and then background was darker what would that look like when they cross over the easiest way I think to do that is to mix whatever color would be here and here and then put it in that shape um, as far as keeping things clean for edging and things like that you might want to use some blue tape painters tape um, for your borders just to keep them clean so otherwise if you don't have a real steady hand it can be an issue i did not tape this down my board because i'm constantly turning it as i paint away from me but if you do use tape one thing that you want to do is to get rid of some of the stick you can just lightly put it on your jeans or your on your leg to get rid of a little bit of that stick so when you lay it down you want to burnish it on the edge so the paint doesn't get underneath and then when you're done and you pull it up you want to pull it up like this nice and easy not rip it up so for example up here if I'm pulling this I'm going to pull it towards myself low very slow kind of away it's usually very satisfying seeing a nice clean edge if i were to just rip it up i would rip the paper you also don't want to leave the tape down for days on end because it adheres even stronger and then you'll tend to rip your paper so, I'm just gonna, so I have a nice clean edge as you work on a project like this if you have multiple straight edges you might want to do one section let the paint dry then tape off the next section so you would have a nice clean edge you can see here I did it freehand and it's not the cleanest edge um, if you do it the way I painted this You always remember we want to keep relatively clean water. If it starts getting too much paint in there, it gets muddy and it's going to muddy up your color. But for an edge like this, actually, I'm just going to go up here since I already have this color mixed. I'm using a half inch, quarter inch or a half inch flat. So it has a really nice edge that I can use to go right up next to that. I come over and I grab some paint that I have pre-mixed. 
I can just go right in and cut in relatively clean. And remember, it's paint. It's very forgiving. You can always go back in with more layers, which you'll probably end up doing anyways because it just gives a cleaner look. So therefore, you want to make sure you have enough color mixed up. If you mix up not enough color, you're going to have to remix it and then you have to try and match it. So make sure you have enough so you can even do batches of color um, and store it in small little Tupperware, Tupperware or if you can seal it really good with saran wrap or something like that in a plate. I have this and I have that, um, it's not saran wrap, but it's that stuff that sticks all the way around. So it seals it really nice. If you have little small containers with lids, it should keep the acrylic um, pretty wet. It shouldn't dry up on you. So this is an acrylic. Remember when you mix, based off your color comp, if you wanna keep the colors the same, when you mix your colors, you wanna mix them a little bit lighter than what you see when you mix them wet because acrylics dry a little bit darker, usually around 10% darker. So I go into my edge, I'll pull back and then clean up. Um, something like around here, it's the same method basically. My pencil line is really dark, I wouldn't normally do that but I want to make sure I get rid of it. You would want to draw, um, probably draw a little bit lighter than I did. I just did it darker so that you can see what is here on camera, but you can see my grid lines through here a little bit because I wasn't able to erase them all the way since I used a colored pencil. It's another reason why when you do your gridding, like in the last video, you want to, um, Draw that in really light with pencil so that you can erase it when you're done with your drawing, when you're done transferring it. Um, okay, that's good enough for now. It's a little sketchy in here. I could, you know, leave it like that or I could go in with another coat of my blue, which is starting to dry up a little bit. Um, get eraser stuff, but you can see when it's wet. This is the same color as this, but when it goes on wet, it's a lot lighter. It will dry darker, like you see in the other areas. Okay. So one more thing. Um, before I get into this is I typically work from the background forward so and bigger shapes blocking those in quicker and then going into your smaller shapes and the foreground last that way if things need to be layered in the background and cleaned up I can do that relatively easy and quick and then build layers on top of each other so that what's most important as far as a focal point will still come forward. Um, it's part of the reason why I went darker with my lettering because lighter colors, especially tints, tend to recede back a little bit more where more saturated colors, brighter colors will come forward, darker colors will come forward. Um, you could go the opposite. I could go dark and then do really light that contrast would do the same thing. It's just the look that you're going for is a personal choice. So there is that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in some of this and then I'll come back when it comes time to mix for a transparency.
Okay, so now I've done a first coat of this. I would go back and clean it up. There's a lot of little spots that are looser than I like um, edging and things like that. I would go in with probably smaller brushes than even this. This is a round that comes to a point. You can use a filbert. Those are nice too. Whatever you're comfortable with. But you can see, I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to, you know, my signature comes like this. So figuring out how can I get that to have a little bit of depth by, do I leave this darker and then this lighter so this comes forward or would I flip it? These are things that you want to resolve in your preliminary because now I'm kind of changing my mind, but I'm not going to. Um, we're at a point now where I painted in all the shapes that are not overlapping. I want variety in my color as far as my value so that when they do overlap, you can see it. If it's all the same color, you're not going to see where it's overlapping. And that's part of this project is to show how you can show the overlapping areas. Um, so for instance, if a really pretty clear one on here is where this breaks out, um, when two things overlap each other, they tend to get a little bit darker. So going with a darker color can show that. Um, you could go with the reverse and go lighter, depending on what it is. But for that, I would go darker. For here, in an area like this, all I'm gonna do, my hand is a mess. This is why I have paper, because you could see, possibly, um, if I have this down, <laughs> it's gonna get all over. So you want to have a nice piece of paper down, provided this is dry. You don't want to be putting paper down on wet paint. Um, so my overlapping area, if I have this color mixed up and I have this, I'm going to blend the two. So hopefully I have enough that I can do that. And if they're right next to each other, just... You know, I have this here, and then I have the lighter tone. Um, I don't really have that mixed up. You could just mix them together. But essentially, they're using the same colors. This is just a tint of it, so it's really light. So maybe it's just a matter of adding a little bit more white to this, but not getting as light as that. I don't know if that's going to be enough. And it's not going to be my neatest painting because normally I would have my face really close to it because my, <laughs> my vision's not great close up. Um, I have glasses, but you know, don't want my head in the camera. So again, I would go in and I would be cleaning all of this up with another coat. It's another reason you want to have a lot of color mixed up. If you don't and it changes, then just go back over it. Like I said, it's just paint. You can always paint over your mistake. So you can see now with this lighter one going over the dark, that's about what you would get. And that's going to dry a touch darker. So anywhere where it's doing that, even here, if I bring this down like this. That's better. You can do something like that. Um, 
over here. You can use your pinky on the paper to steady yourself. I would probably do this more in sections as things dry. You can also use a blow dryer to dry your paint. Same thing as you know, watercolor. When you work with watercolor, use a blow dryer to dry your paint faster. Get rid of your pencil lines. So it's color against color and what that looks like. Where these two overlap, they're the same color, but again, if they overlap, they would probably look a little bit darker in that area. So I'm just going to use the same color. Um, one option, going back to me changing my mind on what I would do if I had this coming this one a little bit darker and then this one was even lighter then this crossover might be a little bit different because I don't like how these four areas are all the same so I might go just a touch darker with that one I'm not going to do it right now Okay, um, where the dark overlaps the light. So again, it would be the same thing. Mix this color, this color, and put it there. That's the easiest way to get your transparencies. Um, obviously, you could paint all the way through, and then when you do the next color going over it, if it was thinned out a little bit, it could work as a transparency like that. But when you're first learning how to paint, Working with glazes, because that would be a glaze, can get a little tricky in keeping it pretty clean. Um, so I would go back in and I'm going to clean all of this up because I don't like it. And I'm still not sure about these circles. I don't know what I want to do with them yet. I kind of paint them here, but haven't made up my mind. Um, but that's about the gist of it for doing transparencies and laying in your acrylic pretty flat we're looking for a flat color um even though you know it's streaky in here more than one coat and you can tape off little areas if you want if you have a lot of straights use different size brushes um if an area is dry and you want to put your hand down probably be better to have a piece of paper down and to help keep your hand steady have your little pinky out there and Nice and slow, be patient with yourself, and you'll have good results. All right, thank you.